cholesterol level is a little bit high, that's not dangerous. That's not bad. It's not worrisome. It doesn't make you feel bad. It's actually mm -hmm. probably good for you. And especially in women, if they have a high cholesterol, they actually live longer if they mm -hmm. have a high cholesterol than if they have a very low cholesterol. So mm -hmm. everyone should stop worrying about having a, an elevated cholesterol. It is not dangerous. What you want to mm -hmm. focus on is having a normal hemoglobin A1C, having a normal C-peptide, having normal triglycerides, and having mm -hmm. a normal HDL cholesterol. Those are the most important markers of mm -hmm. optimal health. Do not worry about your total cholesterol or your LDL cholesterol. They are mm -hmm. not of any concern to you, I promise. Right, right. Um, I, I like a little more insights from you on LDL because uh, a lot of doctors scare patients with uh, a slight spike in LDL. Uh, I would love your insights in terms of uh, the low density lipoprotein cholesterol not being as bad as you say, right? I, I'd like a little more insights from you on that. Yeah. So when we, there's actually research that was done in the United States back in the 60s and 70s that showed without a doubt that, that high LDL levels are not that big of a deal. Mm -hmm. But that did not fit with the current fad in medicine to say that, that cholesterol is bad, fat's bad, saturated fat is bad, and we should all try to lower our, our LDL cholesterol. So the, the research either didn't get published or didn't get talked about. And mm -hmm. so now that we're going back and looking at all the research, we find mm -hmm. that, that an elevated LDL cholesterol, if it's a risk factor for heart attack at all, it's a very tiny risk factor. A much so so having an elevated A1C, being pre-diabetic or diabetic, is a ten times greater risk for heart attack than having mm -hmm. an elevated LDL. Mm -hmm. Having high triglycerides and having a low HDL is a ten times greater risk for having a heart attack than mm -hmm. having an elevated LDL. So mm -hmm. what I want people to worry about are the most important things first. So the mm -hmm. first thing I want you to worry about is getting your blood sugar back to normal, getting your A1C back to normal, getting your triglycerides back to normal. Mm -hmm. After you've done that, then if you want to do some more research on LDL, check out my YouTube videos and my mm -hmm. Facebook page, and then you'll understand, oh, having a high total cholesterol and a high LDL, that's probably a good thing, not a bad thing, but I know mm -hmm. that's not what the average doctor will tell you. Correct, correct. Absolutely. Um, I hope, Kevin, that answers your question really well, right? Uh, the next question is coming from Abhay uh, in terms of asking on whether fruits are really as healthy as everybody tells us about. Again, um, us in India hear that a lot. Um, I, I want to know from you because the amount of fruit that is allowed on a ketogenic diet is lesser or the amount number of fruits that are allowed on a ketogenic diet are lesser. Um, you already talked about the fact that uh, like ketogenic diet is nutrient dense, right? Uh, but I would like to know, like, say, for example, if somebody goes on an other protocol, uh, are fruits really that healthy? Um, and if not a ketogenic diet, what kind of fruits should be consumed? Um, I'd love your insights on that as well, Dr. Berry. Yeah, so fruit is not very nutrient dense at all, but mm -hmm. it is very dense in sugar, both mm -hmm. sucrose and, and fructose, very dense in sugar, especially mm -hmm. some of the more popular fruits like grapes and bananas and raisins. Uh, papaya, the melons, they are basically just a big sack of sugar. Mm -hmm. And so they, it, they may have some vitamins and minerals in them, no doubt. But mm -hmm. it's, it's much the same as if I took a can of Coca-Cola, right? Mm -hmm. And I opened it and I sprinkled a pinch of vitamins and minerals in it. Would, mm -hmm. would that then make the Coca-Cola a health food? No. I don't think so. I don't right. think most people would believe that either. But right. basically... A, 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 a sugary, high glycemic index fruit is just a mm -hmm. Coca-Cola with some vitamins and minerals sprinkled in. There are mm -hmm. much healthier ways to get the vitamins and minerals that you'll find in fruit sparsely from dark green leafy veg and non-starchy keto-friendly vegetables. And mm -hmm. so if you're worried about getting plenty of vitamins and minerals, you need to eat keto. Uh, mm -hmm. Drinking fruit juice is just as bad as drinking a Pepsi or a Coca-Cola. Fruit mm -hmm. juice ha has no meaningful health benefits whatsoever. It's going to stall your fat loss. It's going to spike your blood sugar and your insulin. It's going to lead to inflammation in your body. There's no health benefits from drinking fruit juice. Eating whole raw fruit is less bad than drinking fruit juice, but that still doesn't make it good, does it? 
correct, correct. You can Absolutely. always get your vitamins and minerals from better keto sources. Absolutely, absolutely, uh, fantastic, fantastic. Um, now this this question is all over uh, in our questions right now in our live. Uh, in terms of how ketogenic diet is beneficial for PCOS, a uh, lot of people are asking this uh, and they're mentioning <laughs> their symptoms also in the live. So I would like your insights in terms of uh, what is the right approach to do a ketogenic diet on PCOS and how is it beneficial uh, in terms of various symptoms, which could include irregular period cycles, facial hair, acne, all of that, right? Uh, yep. So one is ketogenic diet uh, beneficial for PCOS, and two, uh, what should be the approach and how is it beneficial in the first place? Yeah, and what third would be what would what is a, the approach for doing a ketogenic diet? Uh, yeah, gotcha. A ketogenic way of eating is the perfect diet if you suffer from the symptoms of mm -hmm. PCOS. Uh, mm -hmm. A lot of doctors will tell you that the reason you have your symptoms is because you have high levels of testosterone. Uh, mm -hmm. The truth of the matter is the 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 root cause of PCOS is chronically elevated levels of insulin. Insulin mm -hmm. is kind of the master hormone. And when your insulin level is chronically high, it fiddles with it and, and it messes up your thyroid hormones and it messes up your sex hormones. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And so your testosterone may in fact not be normal, but it's mm -hmm. because of your diet. It's because you're eating too many total carbohydrates a day, which is mm -hmm. keeping your levels of cortisol and, and insulin chronically elevated. And that's mm -hmm. causing all of your other hormones to be in unhealthy healthy levels as well. The, one of the very first things that someone with PCOS notices when they start a real whole food ketogenic diet is that mm -hmm. their acne starts to get much better. They notice mm -hmm. that they're, they're, they start to have a regular period again. They notice that their period symptoms are much less severe. But the acne is the first thing that starts to get better. When you lower your total carbohydrates and get rid of low-fat dairy, like skim milk and fat-free stuff, immediately your acne is going to start to get better. When you mm -hmm. remove grains from your diet, rice, wheat, oats, and corn, your acne mm -hmm. is immediately going to start to get better, mm -hmm. as are all of your other PCOS symptoms. And so there's really no special way to do keto with PCOS. You just want to keep your carbohydrate intake as low as you possibly can. Avoid mm -hmm. any low-fat or fat-free dairy, mm -hmm. drinks, or foods, and avoid any grains whatsoever, and avoid fruit juices. Mm -hmm. uh, just eliminating those things are going to make your acne, acne much better and help your PCOS symptoms. Fantastic, fantastic. So all the women who are asking uh, about this, um, insulin resistance is actually the reason why you are facing PCOS, right? Uh, so, so I think the insights that Dr. Berry has given should be the right approach for you to go uh, to actually go out and reverse your PCOS, right? Um, all right, great. Uh, the next question that is coming is, it's uh, like one is that how long can one do a ketogenic diet for, right? So again, um, uh, this is a repeated question that is coming to us. You've already spoken about the fact that it's very nutrient dense, but uh, can somebody do a ketogenic diet forever for the rest of their life? Uh, is it scalable and uh, how long can one do it? Yep. So if you start to call the ketogenic diet or the low carb diet or the carnivore diet, if you start referring to those as the proper human diet, then immediately you, you understand, well, of course I should eat the proper human diet forever. Mm -hmm. I should never stop eating the proper human diet. I, mm -hmm. I think 100% uh, a ketogenic diet made up of real whole foods, not keto cookies and cakes and shakes and pies and bars. I'm talking mm -hmm. about real keto food, real food, right? Right. That, that is the healthiest diet that you can possibly eat. And therefore, that is the diet that you should eat forever. There should be never mm -hmm. be a time when you say, you know, I don't want to eat the proper human diet anymore. Mm -hmm. That doesn't make any sense. Fantastic. Right. Fantastic. So I hope that answers your question. You can do the ketogenic diet for as long as possible, provided you're doing it the healthy way and you're making sure that all your macro and micronutrients are uh, getting in place. Right. Um, uh, two questions are coming. Uh, one is from Pile 84 and the second is from Veronica Gore. Uh, the first question is, how important is it to stick to your macros on a ketogenic diet? And I think it's quite related because uh, the next question that is coming is, do I have to be in a caloric deficit on a ketogenic diet to lose fat, right? I think both the questions are aligned to ketogenic on a weight loss, a ketogenic diet for a weight loss uh, regime, right? So yeah. uh, we'd love your insights in terms of uh, both these questions. Yeah, so when you first start 
learning about keto and doing keto, you probably should track your, your macronutrients. And the three macronutrients are protein, fat, and carbohydrates, right? And so you should track those for a while because many of us, we don't know how many grams of carbohydrates are in a banana. We don't know how many grams of fat are in an egg or how many grams of protein is in butter. We just don't know because we're not a nutritionist. But you need to know those things roughly. You don't have to know the exact number, but you need to have a good idea of the macronutrient breakdown of everything you eat. Uh, mm -hmm. After you've been doing keto for a month or two, you don't have to continue to track your macros because you know mm -hmm. now what, what's a high-fat food, what's a high-protein food, and what's a high-carb food. You know mm -hmm. what to avoid, and you know what to eat plenty of. And then the second part of that is calories. Being mm -hmm. in a calorie deficit is a myth, okay? Mm -hmm. First of all, we can never calculate how many calories we actually burn each day. That is an impossible number to calculate. Uh, Absolutely. There, are, there are gurus and in, in influencers on Instagram who will say, oh, just use this formula and you'll know exactly how many calories you burn a day. That right. is untrue. There's no truth in that at all. You can never, even if you went and lived in a scientist laboratory, they could never accurately calculate how many calories you burn a day, whether you work out, whether you don't, whether you were sedentary, whether you were active. Mm -hmm. Nobody can calculate that number, number one. Number mm -hmm. two, you can never calculate the amount of calories in the foods you eat each day. Mm -hmm. One papaya might have 180 calories. The next papaya might have 160 or 210. Mm -hmm. Just right. that number that you find in the charts, that's not the true number for the banana you're about to eat. You never mm -hmm. know how many calories you eat a day. The only mm -hmm. thing we can do is roughly estimate how many calories we burn a day and mm -hmm. roughly estimate how many calories we intake a day from our food. You can mm -hmm. never know the real numbers. So mm -hmm. counting calories is a foolish waste of time. Mm -hmm. Trying to be in a calorie deficit is a foolish waste of time because you don't know how many you burned, you don't know how many you've eaten. You're just guessing at the numbers. So how is that going to help you? I think a much better strategy is to just lower your carbohydrate intake to under 20 total grams a day, and then watch the fat fall off as you eat mm -hmm. as much keto-friendly food as you'd like. Ketogenic diet because, again, people get this thing that, okay, because uh, my carbohydrates are low, I have the leverage to consume as much fat as possible on a ketogenic diet. Because you say that one does not have to f count calories, does one have to keep their fat intake uh, in check or uh, what should be the approach like in terms of their fat intake also? No, one of, the, one of the beautiful things about a ketogenic diet is you get to eat as much fat as you want. You get to eat as much salt as you want for taste. And so you don't have to limit fat. You don't have to limit salt. Uh, what you want to try to do is get at least one gram of protein per kilogram of your body weight every day. And then add as much fat as you like for taste and for satiety or being full. Mm -hmm. Salt your food to taste. Salt is not dangerous. Salt does not raise your blood pressure. Salt does not cause heart attacks. All that stuff is a myth. It's not true. Mm -hmm. And so, no, you don't have to limit your fat at all. You get to eat until you're comfortably full. Then mm -hmm. you stop eating. Okay, fantastic. So answering everybody's question, uh, you can have a sufficient amount of fat on the diet as long as you're feeling <laughs> satiated or full on the diet, right? The next question is coming from Paridhi Kohli. Uh, she's asking, what is a dietary intervention for high uric acid on the ketogenic diet? Um, uh, yeah. So, so again, this would be a very specific question, but again, I would love it. No, that's fine, and that, that's a good question. So the ketogenic diet does not cause gout. Mm -hmm. it actually, people with gout actually have fewer flare-ups of their gout, and they have less severe flare-ups of their gout. Gout mm -hmm. is actually caused by two things. It's caused by high levels of insulin, and it's mm -hmm. caused by chronic inappropriate inflammation in your joints. Mm -hmm. High insulin and high inflammation is caused by eating a high carbohydrate diet full of grains and full of vegetable oils. That's what causes gout. Mm -hmm. Okay, I have a YouTube video about this if people want more details and they want links to the research that mm -hmm. prove what I'm saying, go check out my YouTube video about gout. 
Don't worry about the ketogenic diet causing gout. It will not. Eating lots of fatty seafood, lots of fatty red meat will not cause gout. Do not worry mm -hmm. about that. Okay. All right. Fantastic. I hope, Paridhi, this question is answered, uh, uh, is answered for you, right? Um, the next question, again, I think it's a very important question, uh, which is from Ashwarya underscore Spikey. She's asking about, is diet coke allowed in keto? Because again, because keto is gaining so much popularity, again, a lot of brands have come with a low carb version of their Coke or sodas, so on and so forth, right? Um, yeah. I would probably want to couple it with the fact that one is diet Coke allowed in keto and the second is how healthy is it? Uh, and three, if it is allowed, what is the kind of quantity that one should have just in case yeah. they have a craving for uh, a cola or a soda or a Coke for that yeah. matter? Yeah. yeah, so if you have a soft drink addiction, and you're converting to the ketogenic diet, I think it's fine to have one or two cans of Diet Coke or Diet Pepsi a day uh, mm -hmm. in, in the beginning of keto. Mm -hmm. But as you proceed towards eating a proper human diet for the rest of your life, Diet Coke and Diet Pepsi are not part of the proper human diet. They mm -hmm. are products that are manufactured in a chemical factory. That's what they are. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, they taste good, and that's because they have scientists who are good at making things taste good to the human tongue. Doesn't mm -hmm. make it healthy, doesn't make it good. Uh, any soft drink, any soda is unhealthy. But mm -hmm. uh, a diet soft drink or a diet soda is gonna be less bad than the ones that are full of sugar. But mm -hmm. eventually I want you to slowly wean down your soda addiction and try mm -hmm. to drink only water, drink or, or drink sparkling water. I don't know what mm -hmm. brands of sparkling sparkling water or mineral water you guys have in India, but those those still have that, that fizzy feeling in your mouth, but they don't have the chemical ingredients that mm -hmm. diet. You can drink uh, black coffee, you can drink mm -hmm. unsweetened tea. All those things are part of the, pro the proper human diet, but soft drinks ultimately are not part of mm -hmm. that diet. But I don't think you have to stop drinking mm -hmm. soda uh, just overnight. I think you can wean it down slowly and so switch over to a diet soda and then drink mm -hmm. less and less of that as each week goes by. Mm -hmm. Fantastic, fantastic. Um, the next question is coming from Farisha, uh, 9904. She's asking about how many <coughs> proteins and fat we should have in a day uh, if my calories per day is 1800. I think this question has already been answered, but I want to know from you in terms of one question that had come from us uh, in terms of protein intake as well. A lot of people do a ketogenic diet to uh, uh, lose weight but maintain their muscle mass as well. Right? To the gym, so on. Uh, is it true that, uh, I hope Dr. Mary, you're with us. Yeah, so yeah. So is it true that uh, you can still maintain your muscle mass on a ketogenic diet and still lose weight? Uh, what is the protocol for somebody Absolutely. to take, uh, what is the right protocol for somebody to maintain their lean muscle mass while they're doing a ketogenic diet and still achieve their fat loss, maintaining their lean muscle mass? Yep, so that's, that's an excellent question. So everybody should try to eat at least one gram of protein per kilogram of their body weight every single day. That's, okay. that's going to be the minimum protein requirement for most humans. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're trying to, to lift heavy weights and put on muscle, you may need to eat mm -hmm. more protein than that. Mm -hmm. uh, that's number one. Number two is I want you to get your protein not from protein sh shakes or protein drinks, not from branch chain amino acids, not from collagen supplements. All those things are a waste of money. You're gonna get your protein and your collagen and your branch chain amino acids from eating meat, whether that's mm -hmm. seafood and eggs and cheese and butter, or whether that's lamb and sheep and and goat and and beef i don't it doesn't matter to me which animal product you eat but that's where real protein comes from most of the protein drinks you buy at the health food store are a complete and utter waste of money they don't help you build muscle they may actually stress your kidneys too much i think you can i think you can drink too much protein from a protein drink and harm your kidneys but i don't think you can ever eat enough meat to harm your kidneys because that is an food for human beings meat is part of diet so it, at least one gram per kilogram a day minimum and then if you want to lift weights and try to put on muscle you can eat more protein than that and i said eat protein not drink protein shakes 
Okay, fantastic. Uh, just two follow-up questions to this, uh, doctor. Uh, the first question is that you mentioned about uh, meat and uh, you know all non-vegetarian sources to be great source of protein instead of the protein shake. Um, I want to know from you in terms of what are the right sources of protein that somebody on a vegetarian ketogenic diet should consume. That is one question. And second is uh, what should be the criteria or what is it that somebody should keep in mind while they are on a non-vegetarian ketogenic diet and they are buying meat, right? What are the things that they should keep in mind so that the meat that they're purchasing is healthy enough also, right? Because a lot of people are slightly skeptical or scared to buy meat during the, the COVID, right? Uh, so I would like your insights on both of them. First being, what uh, what are the right protein sources for a vegetarian ketogenic diet first? And the second being in terms of uh, 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 what what are the things that one should keep in mind while they're, while they're buying meat uh, on a ketogenic diet to make sure uh, they're staying healthy? So if you're going to do a, be a vegetarian keto, you have to include seafood in your diet. You have to eat fatty fish. You have to eat crustaceans. You have to eat mollusks. Uh, you need to eat eggs. If you're trying to do a vegetarian keto, you have to include especially the egg yolk in your diet. It, egg yolks are a superfood. They have so many vitamins and minerals. They have all the essential amino acids and fatty acids that you need to protect your muscle mass mm -hmm. while also burning fat. Uh, you've got to eat fish. You've got to eat full fat cheeses. You've got to eat eggs. You've got to eat butter or ghee. You absolutely mm -hmm. need those things. Those are nutritious superfoods. I don't mm -hmm. believe it's possible to live a long, optimally healthy life eating only plant foods. I, I think mm -hmm. unless you're taking a, a, a arm load of supplements, you're, you're going to become deficient in various vitamins and minerals if you're just eating a vegan diet. And so any diet that you have to take lots of supplements with is probably mm -hmm. not the proper human diet, is it? Or you wouldn't have to take the supplements. And so mm -hmm. I think it's possible to eat a very vegetable-heavy diet and still do keto or low-carb right, <clears throat> but you have to eat fish and, and mollusks and, and crustaceans. You have to eat butter. You have to eat full-fat cheese and you have to eat egg yolks at least, if not the whole egg. Right. And how many eggs would you recommend uh, to somebody in a day? Is there a limit that one should keep in mind while they're consuming eggs? Yeah, don't eat more than a dozen a day. A dozen a day, I think everybody should be good with a dozen a day. Right, fantastic. Um, the next question is coming from Alka DRIUS. Uh, she's asking, I'm, lo I'm losing too much weight on a ketogenic diet and intermittent fasting. What should I do? Um, if somebody is having more weight loss or fat loss than uh, they should, what is the protocol that they should probably resort to? Uh, but because again, so, you're losing uh, your body very fat. Easy. Yeah, it's very easy. All, if if you're losing weight too fast on keto, and I don't under, I don't really understand what that means. Uh, I mean, who who complains about losing weight too fast, right? But I understand it may be a valid concern. But if you're losing weight too fast, all you have to do is add ten total grams of carbohydrate to your diet each day, mm -hmm. and, and they need to be keto-friendly carbs. So eat more spinach, eat more broccoli, eat more carbohydrates, eat a handful of berries each day, blueberries, raspberries, blackberries, strawberries. Mm -hmm. Adding 10 grams of carbohydrate a day of keto-friendly carbs will slow down your fat loss. That's all mm -hmm. you have to do. And if that doesn't slow it down enough, add 10 more grams of keto-friendly mm -hmm. carbs. So if you mm -hmm. add 10 or 20 grams a day to your however many carbs you're eating right now, mm -hmm. that's going to slow down your fat loss. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Uh, fantastic. I hope uh, that answers your question, Alka. Um, um, the next question is coming from uh, Good Wives Halo, who's asking, what is the effect of keto if you're a diabetic but not on meds? Um, if you could mm -hmm. probably quickly explain it uh, yep. for both type 2 diabetic and type 1 diabetic folks because yep. uh, both of them are viewing the live right now. Uh, that'd be great. Yeah, so eating a ketogenic diet is going to lower your blood sugar back down to normal levels. That's very important for long-term health. Eating a ketogenic diet is also going to return your, your blood insulin levels back down to normal. That's also mm -hmm. very important for long-term health. The third thing that eating keto is going to do is it's going to reduce your levels of chronic inappropriate inflammation mm -hmm. back down towards normal. That's also very, very important for long-term health. And so mm -hmm. by doing those three things, the ketogenic way of eating is going to make you not only look better, not mm -hmm. only feel better, but it's going to actually help you be healthier 
for the long term so that you have a mm -hmm. very long, healthy health span and mm -hmm. a very long lifespan as well. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Um, I hope that answers your question regarding doing the ketogenic diet for your diabetes, right? Um, I think Dr. Berry talked about it in good detail initially as well in terms of how it is helping you or just uh, helping you with your Um, I think Dr. Berry uh, probably left by mistake. Um, we'll just wait for him to join again. Uh, folks, I would highly recommend you wait for a bit as we wait for Dr. Ken Berry to join the live again. We're just waiting for Dr. Berry to join in. Um, as soon as he joins in, we'll probably uh, continue with all the questions that you're asking. Folks, you can just hold on for a bit. We're just waiting for Dr. Berry to join again. We can just wait for a bit um, and we'll have Dr. Berry joining us very soon. All right, so I've just received a mail from Dr. Ken Berry, uh, who has probably told us that uh, he's faced a bit of an internet issue due to which he's not able to join in. Um, um, I hope this session was insightful for all you guys um, and I hope you guys enjoyed the entire session. Um, we've answered questions in varied aspects of the ketogenic diet and I hope you guys had a good time uh, with us. Right? Feel free to message us all uh, questions that you have on a ketogenic diet. Uh, we'll make sure that in the content going forward, we'll get that answered. Thank you so much uh, and you guys have a great day. Thank you. Bye-bye.